you are working, you are eating the money. After a year, you start asking yourself, so no save this, no save this at all. Hey, abroad though, this nobody told me about abroad. That is why you are seeing this video now. Hello, beautiful people. You are welcome back again to my channel. My name is Joy, and in today's video, I'll be talking about things to avoid when you move to Canada. This topic is a very sensitive one and I hope you will enjoy this video. Kindly watch this video to the end and don't forget to hit the subscribe button when you are done watching. So without any further ado, let's dive into the video. The first thing you should avoid is underestimating the importance of proper clothing in Canada. You know we have funny weather in Canada. During summer, it could be really hot, and during winter, it could really be cold. I remember the first time I came into Canada, um, it was so hot that my kids, they, they looked heat rashes. So this is the same Canada people say it's very cold, it's very cold. So it's two ways, very extreme weather, especially in Saskatchewan, where the land is flat. When it's hot, it's very hot. When it's cold, it's very cold. The trick is that during summer, you start buying winter wears or winter things because it tends to be cheaper. And during winter, you start buying summer things. For example, um, if you want to get affordable fans or ACs, this period we are in now is the best time because who needs AC this time around when everywhere is cold? So you can start getting them now ahead of time. The second thing you should avoid in Canada is comparing provinces. You know, even though these provinces are in Canada, it doesn't mean they all have the same laws binding them. Although there might be some similarities, yeah, but there are many differences. What works in Saskatchewan may not work in Alberta. Let me give you a practical example. When I just came, I was preparing for um, driving, I wanted to do this um, driving test, the written one, and at that period, I couldn't lay my hands on Saskatchewan's um, driver's handbook. So somebody was like, I have the one for Alberta. I was like, I better look for how to get the one of Saskatchewan. You understand? So don't compare provinces. That is one thing you should avoid. The next thing you should avoid is neglecting your immigration paperwork. <laughs> you see those documents, those immigration documents, they are very sensitive. Don't neglect even the slightest one. Always keep them up to date. Let's assume maybe you lose anyone, for example, maybe your PR card or something. Report as quickly as possible. Try to get it updated. If it's your health insurance, try to work on it. If it's anything related to your immigration journey or your immigration documents, make sure they are up to date. Don't neglect any part of them. In fact, get a folder strictly for your immigration documents. In case anything happens, you can always um, have evidence. You know, Canada is... Uh, it's not even Canada. Even when I was in the UK, anything, if you pay council uh, tax, you will get a letter. If you are owing, you will get blah, 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 blah. Things can just happen that you will now have to start showing evidences. Another thing you should avoid is cultural insensitivity. There are so many cultures here in Canada. And we all know that Canada is a country that accepts different cultures. So... Um, if you're a new immigrant here, you need to take note of what they practice here so that you will not be left out. The first culture shock I experienced even when I moved abroad, not even Canada, is that about 85 to 90 percent of white people will always give you a smile, whether it's real or fake. When you go close to them, they just give you this smile. You understand? Even though it's not real, but it will just give you that smile. Well, where I'm coming from, uh, faces depends on how we feel. If we feel sad, we carry the sad look. 
you will feel happy we carry you know that is where i'm coming from but when i moved down to canada i just learned to always keep this smiley face irrespective of what i feel at that moment because one they can easily talk about you here maybe they can especially when you are at your place of work oh that lady does not relate it does not do that and in most cases it's not like you have anything against them me personally i like to have my time sometimes maybe when, when maybe when i'm at work and i don't feel like talking to somebody it doesn't mean i have anything against you but sometimes they read me this to it they make it look like uh this person is not free blah blah blah, blah. and once they start giving all those remarks about you just know that we, in no time that place will become unbearable for you so i consciously started working on it so what I do, once they are just having a general discussion, I'll just say one thing. I say, yes, yes, that's true. So that you look and see if you are flowing. Okay? Then another thing here I've noticed is that they easily ask you about your family life. Where I'm coming from, we don't do that. We hardly talk about it. You can't just be walking on the road in Nigeria. Somebody will just tell, ask you, how are you? Are you married? It's rare. Am I right? Nigerians that are watching this video, you know what I'm talking about. Really, you are married. How many kids do you have now? Where I'm coming from, we see it as you being nosy, but it's not like that here. Sometimes, let me be frank with you guys, I don't feel comfortable answering those questions because I, I would not do that. I would not do that. I would just see somebody and say, I, are you married now? How old are you? How many kids do you have now? Do you have girls? Do you have boys? To me, I feel it's my personal life. But it is not like that here. Here is what they just normally love to see. You understand? I'm not saying you should totally adjust to their culture. But just know how to play your games here. So that um, eyes will not be on you. <laughs> okay? So avoid all this sorry, sorry. Oh, you are sneezing. Sorry. No. Those are not the... That's not how they do all those things there so well it is um someone that has stayed here for a while to know most of those cultural practices so that is why you have to learn first so that you don't go and insult somebody without you knowing like where i'm coming from we add uncle this to somebody's name sister this well here they call themselves by their names except maybe if it's official or you understand but most times they call you hey this hey that and they don't say anything wrong in it but where i'm coming from they see it as disrespect do you get again uh ma sa sa we don't do that here one of the things you should also avoid is don't overlook the need for health insurance you need to look into that when you just move into canada don't overlook it don't say i'll go and do my teeth and go and do this do you know if your insurance covered it so you need to be fast you need to you need to ask questions you don't start incurring bills that you keep paying and paying and paying another thing you should avoid is neglecting the rules and regulations of your province i don't want to even use canada as a whole because every province um has its own rules and regulations now let me liken it to um driving there are some rules you need to follow while driving here. Otherwise, you will collect tickets fire. You will pay. Some rules are like you don't need to park here. Um, when it's a solid line, you don't pass. You know those rules that some of us used to overlook in our home country? You can't overlook it here. If you are caught, you will face the law. If it's a very big offense, you may even be taken to court. So don't neglect uh, the rules and regulations here okay then um, in terms of child care we already know that you don't spank children here so when you are trying to discipline your child you should be careful about it otherwise they will come and collect your children from you another thing you should avoid is overspending you need to live within your means don't buy everything you see buy things that are necessary in fact 
have your budget okay for this month this is so so amount i want to spend then you can now add some money for contingencies if not you just see that you are working you are eating the money you are working you are eating the money after a year you start asking yourself so no savings no savings at all hey abroad though this nobody told me about abroad that is why you are seeing this video now again i'm adding this avoid competition this life is per head when I first came in abroad, when I moved into, not, not even Canada, when I moved into the UK, I noticed people trying to make you feel like I, I get these passes. Don't live a life of competition in Canada. Not even Canada, if you're in the US, just live your life part time. Everybody is not destined equally. Don't say because Mr. A has four cars, then you start seeing how you can buy five cars. Who are you trying to impress? Anybody that is trying to do all those things where I am, you will just say that I won't give you face. Because I just like living my life simply. I dress simply. Some people will go for the most expensive things. One thing most people don't know is that you can still get something affordable and you still look good. You understand? You can get something affordable and you still live well. Who are you trying to impress? Don't forget that all these things I'm saying will not matter in heaven. Canada, UK, it will not matter in heaven. It's your soul that will matter. So, just as you are enjoying life, just also know that all these things are vanity. So, don't kill yourself. Don't kill yourself to, to impress anybody. Oh, I want to go for a birthday party. I need to go and buy shoes. Who are you impressing? Must you even go? See, any... I know when I just came in, oh, somebody was saying, come and join this, this, come and there's it. I told them, I said... If I don't join this group, is it that I cannot live well in Canada? The best say you can live. I say, I'm okay. I'm okay. I don't want to choke myself in some things that I will not start struggling. You know, some of these issues we face is we that use our hands to, to enter. Then when we enter into it, we start struggling. Avoid competition. Another thing you should avoid is too many friends. We let's say too many friends. I always relate to the UK. When I was in the UK, I had few good friends. In fact, all my friends were okay. Yeah, nice. Because I carefully select my friends. I don't make friends because I need to make. I make friends because, yes, we share the same thing in common. If I am not at work, I'm in my house. I'm not in my house. I'm in the church. Just occasionally, okay, I take my kids out. Maybe for sightseeing. Uh, maybe for bed days because sometimes kids need all these things. But if not, I just like my comforts. Please, I don't want stress. When I came in here, <laughs> my first experience was weird. I don't want to use the word bad. Because when I came in, I felt like I saw my fellow brothers and sisters. But I didn't know that I was entering into the wrong thing. Well, I thank God that it happened that initial time. So when I came in, I thought, yes, I was in a group of my fellow people now. And it didn't end well. It didn't end well. So at that moment, I just concluded, I beg, so much friends I don't want. If I have one or two, three persons that we share the same ideas, we, you know, we are on the same page, I'm okay. You see people, they will pack friends here in Canada and those friends will not bring trouble to them. Then they will start, people will start settling quarry. So avoid too many friends here because I'm talking from experience. I don't want to say so much about it. It was not a good experience. Actually, I don't know why we are the ones that do ourselves here. I'm talking about Nigerians now. I'm sorry to say. Most of us, we do ourselves here in Canada. When we get information, we hoard it. When we have solution to something, we keep it. When we, you understand, most of us, that is why I admire Indians, I admire Filipinos. Oh, sometimes when you see the unity amongst them, it's top notch. I won't say too much about that. That's by the way. You should also avoid negative people. You know, we are in a country where 
whoever comes maybe like three years or four years before you always look like a lord. See, this is how you do it here. I don't know what they will gain here. When there's nothing bad in you telling somebody I came four years ago, are you using it to feel that you are more special than the person? Or how? Is it that... Because I always like to understand a conversation. Okay, you have you have spent four years here, this and that. So, what's your point? Are you trying to tell me, okay, don't do this? Yeah, you can tell me, ah, I've stayed four years here. See, you see this route? Don't pass this route. If you take this route, you will get caught. Okay, you see this? Uh, so, when you are talking based on that, I will understand that you are being positive. You are being... You are telling me to be careful. Why some people see it or as a way to oppress you? <laughs> I don't know if I'm really explaining this thing the way it is. When some people tell you, I've been here for the past five years, see, this and that. Some see it as pride. Some see it as a way to oppress you. I think oppression is the word. So you will not be... There was a day I told somebody, I said, it's okay. Okay, you'll be here, this and that. Hey? You've not heard that it's not the first person that bought a car. That it's not that person that bought the best car. I hope people have heard that adage before. Or the first person that built a house. It's not that person that built the best house. So save me all the stress of, uh, where I, you know, I came here before you. Oh, stop that. I want to give you people practical examples. When I just joined this, my place of work, um, no, there was this person that would always say, you know, here, yeah. they always greet everybody. Here, yeah, you know, <sighs> I was no longer comfortable. It's okay for you to tell me once, twice. But when it's like any little thing I do, this is how you are going to say, then I said, come, do you think it's my first time mixing up with white people? You bet it, the person was like, yeah. I said, you are sounding as though um, seeing a white person. Is like winning a jackpot. When I told the person that this is not my first time working with them, the person calmed down. So let's assume it was really my first time of working with them. Hey, I can't say one or two things before the person will say, hey, this, that, you know, this is this. Oh, say me all those things. When you are trying to put someone through, do it out of love, not out of you oppressing the person and all that. No, it's not, it's not good. Avoid people that do that. I'm, I've gradually moved away from all those Canada rules and all that. So this is more like we being get, we we getting personal because um, I've stayed a few months here, many things to talk about. I'm just going to do a separate video on that, but let me just chip in some. So avoid too many friends. Avoid negative people. Avoid people that always bring out the stress in you, not the best in you. I will forever appreciate two of my friends that I've met here. Yeah, they will tell you this is how it is, but that does not mean you cannot succeed. You know, that when you when somebody tells you something like that, you feel this sense of uh, relief. Not someone telling you the hard way. It's only it has to be hard. Avoid negative people here in Canada. We have many of them because one, they think they've made it. They think they've made it. We have them among the whites. We have them among the blacks. So I'm being general now. Okay. Just be focused. If you're a family person, focus on your family. Focus on you serving God. Focus on your job. You understand? Don't create room for all those things. Again, don't be envious. I should add that. People usually neglect that. It's possible that two of you came into Canada once. Maybe Mr. A, Mr. B. All of a sudden, Mr. A bought a house, bought a car, and you are still struggling. Be happy for the person. Remove jealousy. Remove envy, uh, spirit of envy. It won't help. Okay? Because before you know it now, the devil will start magnifying some things in your mind towards that person. And it will result into this kind of lifetime enmity. Don't be envious. Be happy, uh, be, be happy for, for people. And also pray that God does yours for you. Another thing you should avoid is um, you train away your God. 
if you were not a strong Christian or Muslim, where you were coming from, you will be worse when you come here. Because too many activities, you want to meet up with views, you want to do this, you won't even have time. I think the best way if you're a Christian is to engage in a, a, in a unit, so it will make you committed in a way. Because before you know it, you will just ask yourself, when last did I really pray genuinely? You know, that thing used to happen to me. You say, wow, you want to pay bills, the children are there, you need to get them clothes. Have you really had time for God? You know, for those that go to mosque, the same thing. Avoid being too engrossed with the, so many activities here so that you can have time for your God. You can have time for your family. I have ever experienced some lifestyles here. Parents don't have time for the children. Avoid that. As mommy is coming home, dad is going, at least there should be a period where parents should spend quality time with the kids because this society we are in, you know, anything can happen. You don't know what they are teaching the kids at school. But if you keep spending time with your kids, they will keep telling you their activities in school. So if it's something you will need to guide against, you let the school know. But if daddy is busy, mommy is busy, how would you know? So avoid being too busy. Because this money that we are pushing you, we will not take it to heaven. We won't take it to heaven. Well, I will stop here for now because there are really so much to say and I don't want this video to be too long. But I know I'll be able to hit the salient points. So um, kindly look forward to my next video. And um, thanks so much for watching. And if you have not subscribed yet, please do. And... Um, don't also forget to like, comment, and share this video. Compliments of the season, and bye!